Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. We're continuing our journey to freedom and we're on plague number seven found in Exodus chapter nine. Hey, have you ever been caught in a hailstorm? Uh, you know, where I'm talking about one that isn't just fun to go out in the little tiny pebbles that are falling. I'm talking about one with golf ball size hail or bigger. A few years ago, uh, Meralda was in Phoenix visiting Amber when she was in college. And uh, there was like a microburst where she was driving on the freeway and hail the size of golf balls came pummeling down on a very small section of town. And uh, our car that she was driving was actually totaled. Yes, it broke the windshield, but uh, the rest of the car looked like you had parked it on a driving range of a golf course. It had dents all over the top, the hood, the sides, there three sides. And, uh, and, and so the insurance company totaled it. But here's the thing, the car still drove perfectly fine. The engine worked perfectly fine. It was just cosmetics. And so uh, we replaced the windshield, bought it back from the insurance company and drove it for a number of years after that because it was still a good vehicle. But everywhere we went, people said, what happened to your car? What happened to it? So it was a great conversation piece. Well, today we're looking at the seventh plague and it's a hailstorm. Uh, it's a long hailstorm. In fact, it's such a bad hailstorm that uh, people die if they're out in the fields. And, and you'd think by now, on the seventh plague, that Pharaoh would get it. You would think by now he would go, okay, I got to do what God wants. Uh, I got to stop, you know, acting like I'm the one in power here. I'm the one in charge here. And uh, but so God tells him, hey, there's going to be this hailstorm. And Moses warns him, you better get all your people in, all your animals in. And what's interesting is it tells us that, that the people who listened uh, actually did that and they protected their, their animals and their people. And then some people ignored it and got hurt. And, and see, that's just a, a, a case in point. God was warning them of the destruction to come because he doesn't really want judgment. He doesn't really want to destroy. He wants to save. He wants to redeem. He wants us to repent. And... Uh, and of course, Pharaoh does the same song and dance. The hailstorm's going on and calls Moses in and says, make it stop and I'll let you guys go. And Moses makes it stop. And, and Pharaoh, again, of course, uh, is a liar. He doesn't follow through because as soon as things get better, he, he forgets what he promised and just kind of says, hey, I was just kidding. But I want you to notice uh, in this verse 16, because this is, this is so significant, not just for this plague, but for the whole uh, entire story of the plagues. This is what God says. For this purpose, I have raised you up. He's talking to Pharaoh. To show you my power so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. In other words, God said, I'm doing this so people will know who I am and what I'm all about. And, and they will recognize my power and my glory and give me honor. So God's purpose is to save people. In this case, he's saving his people from slavery, setting them free. And he does that by demonstrating his incredible power through these 10 plagues. Now, God still is working to save people and he's still using his power to do it. Now, sometimes that's in dramatic displays of miraculous powers, what uh, we what might call signs and wonders. And uh, it usually happens in places around the world where people don't know God, where they're living in abject poverty and they have no medical care, they have no help, they have no assistance, and God does incredible miracles to draw attention to the fact that he's the God that can save. He's not doing it in arenas for you know, money as people come in and, and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's a completely different signs and wonders uh, kind of thing. But um, that's, that's what God does sometimes, through signs and wonders. But the, the most consistent way that God demonstrates his power is in your life that's been changed. It's in you. It's, it's people experiencing life change and telling people how God has rescued them from darkness, how God has set them free from addiction, how their life has been made new because of the cleansing power of Jesus Christ. You see, it's people like me and you who are declaring the praises of God who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And, and that's the miracle. That's the power displayed through Jesus Christ. So I, I want you to rejoice today in God's power to save. I, I want you to pray for those who are hard-hearted and keep saying no to the, the, the life-changing power of Jesus. 
And I want to encourage you to proclaim how God has delivered you, how God has saved you, how God has restored your life. Because that's our purpose. And I pray that it's your purpose. Because when your purpose is God's purpose, you're going to live a blessed life. I hope that blesses you today, Calvary. Have a great day.